uh, example one here. And if you haven't watched example zero, watch example zero because I think it's the most important example. Um, it's what really sells the idea of a delta epsilon limit argument. But yeah, here um, I'll give you a second proof. I say second because I've given you a very basic proof in example zero, but this will be our very first example of like um, a somewhat sophisticated proof and um, del using delta epsilon, right? And um, a delta epsilon limit argument that is. Um, now, um, the additional examples to come, and there's five more, will each be very different from the other and also progressively more challenging. So um, I encourage you to check them out. All right, with that said, we know that uh, for every epsilon greater than zero, there must exist a delta greater than zero, so that for all x, whenever absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, then we needed to imply that um, absolute value of f of x minus l will be less than epsilon. It is only when this is true, everything I have said, including the hypothesis that I didn't write. So it's when all of that is true that we're able to say that the limit is x goes to a of f of x is equal to um, l. Yeah? OK, cool. All right, so how do, we do, how do we do this in this particular situation? How do we show that the limit is x goes to 1 of 2x squared um, plus 5 is 7? Well, we see that immediately um, a is uh, 1, and then l is 7, and that f of x is 2x squared plus 5. So we can just start with this statement and then followed by that statement, because those will have to follow right each other. And so then uh, we could start the proof by just writing those two uh, statements. So the proof uh, goes like this, which is we say absolute value of x minus 1 was less than delta, we need to imply automatically that um, f of x, which in our case is 2x squared plus 5, minus l, so minus 7, be less than epsilon. Now, um, as you've seen in example 0, um, the task to uh, you know get this automatic implication from here to here is to create a relationship between delta and epsilon. And in the creation of that relationship, what you'll be concerned with um, often, if not always, is manipulating the second statement. So um, next, you can write this second statement as follows, which is that you can write that you have 2x squared minus 2, an absolute value is less than epsilon. And next, um, after that, you can write that you have, um, you can take out the 2 from the absolute value and write x squared. Um, minus 1 is less than epsilon. And then thereafter, we can write 2 times uh, absolute value of x um, minus 1 times x plus 1 is less than epsilon. Now we observe this uh, fact about absolute values, which is the absolute value of a times b is equal to the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. So because of that, we can write the following statement uh, that follows this. Uh, logically follows it, um, which is that we've got 2 times absolute value of x minus 1 um, times absolute value of x plus 1 um, is less than epsilon. And we were really happy when we saw this absolute value of x minus 1 because it's involved in the delta statement. So we want to involve it in the epsilon statement. In particular, in our next step, we're going to solve for it and um, write that we've got absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon divided by 2 times absolute value of x plus 1. Now, notice how similar this statement is to this. So we almost want to say that delta should be epsilon divided by 2 times absolute value of x plus 1. However, we want to um, rid the uh, delta and epsilon of x's in their relationship. We don't want to have an x involved in the relationship between delta and epsilon. So this is what we're going to do about it. We're going to make the assumption that um, delta b equal to uh, 1. Now this assumption makes sense because remember delta epsilon uh, limit um, definition is an epsilon challenge. So you say some epsilon and if, if for your epsilon, delta equals 1 is sufficient, right? Your epsilon is maybe big enough to where like my um, delta equals 1 is a good enough choice, then great. If delta equals 1 is not uh, a good enough choice, then based on the assumption that delta is 1, uh, we're going to come up with another uh, value of delta, which for sure will be good enough when delta equals 1 is too big. Um, so, um, yes.
Um, and, and this is how we do that. Well, if delta is equal to 1, then the absolute value of x minus 1 will be less than 1, right? But that would mean that we'd have negative 1 is less than x minus 1 is less than 1, which in turn means that we have 0 is less than x is less than 2. But wait, if you look at x values in here, which is between 0 and 2, then the absolute value of x plus 1 will have to be less than uh, 3 and uh, greater than uh, 1 for all x values in here. So in other words, the absolute value of um, x plus 1 uh, for uh, 0 is less than x is less than 2 is always less than 3. Okay, cool. That's very useful because then we could say, hey, like um, from here, go to the following statement, which is that the absolute value of um, x minus 1 be less than epsilon divided by 2 times 3, which is 6. So epsilon divided by 6. So here we are. Um, we found when delta equals 1 doesn't work, we found a delta that, that'll work, which is epsilon divided by 6. Yeah? Cool. All right. So now um, we're done with our delta epsilon proof because we're going to say choose um, we're going to say choose delta to equal the minimum of um, 1 and um, epsilon over 6. Like I've already said, if 1 is good enough for your choice of epsilon, great. But if 1 is too big, epsilon over 6 will be um, small and as small as you like um, as you choose smaller and smaller epsilons. Obviously, if your epsilon is really big, delta equals 1 would work and epsilon over 6 would be too big, right? Okay, cool. And that's basically what we're saying. And um, instead of delta equals 1, you could have started with the assumption that delta is equal to 10, but I chose 1 for the same reason I chose um, A to be 1, which is it's computationally easy. Um, yeah? Okay, cool. All right. Otherwise, all I have left to do is to check that we have found the correct delta, right? Or better yet, the correct delta epsilon relationship, yeah? Okay, cool. To do that check, then, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to delete what we have up here, um, and um, I'm going to do the check for you. So um, there's a spot that's bothering me, So um, and this guy was in the way, which is why I didn't see it right there. Okay, cool. All right, so the check goes like this. Um, we go, all right, um, check. So to check, I have um, that um, if the absolute value or we need to have that if the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta we need to have automatically following the absolute value of 2x squared plus 5 minus 7 be less than epsilon but wait the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta means the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than um, epsilon over 6 because um, we chose delta to be epsilon over 6 well, that would mean that um, 6 times the absolute value of x minus 1 uh, is less than epsilon. But then that would mean that uh, we have um, um, 2 times, well, let me do the implies arrow. So we have 2 times 3 times absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon. But wait, we know that absolute value of x plus 1 is less than 3. So if this is true, then the following is automatically true, which is 2 times absolute value of x plus 1 times um, absolute value of x minus 1 um, is less than epsilon. Notice from here to here, the only thing that changed is I replaced the 3 with something that's smaller than 3. And therefore, if this is uh, less than epsilon, then this... 2 needs to be less than epsilon, yeah? Cool. But then now I'm going to use this rule in reverse and write that I have 2 times absolute value of um, x plus 1 times x minus 1 is less than um, epsilon. But that in turn means that I have uh, 2 times abs 2 times absolute value of um, x squared minus 1 is less than epsilon, which in turn means that I have... Um, 
the absolute value of um, 2x squared plus 5 minus 7 is less than epsilon because this very last thing that I wrote, it should be clear, is the same thing if we put the 2 inside the absolute value, it's the same thing as 2x squared minus 2 is less than epsilon, which we can rewrite if, so, if, if we so want as 2x squared um, plus 5 minus 7 is less than epsilon, yeah? And therefore, we have from x minus a is less than delta, through a series of uh, logical steps, we got to f of x minus l, an absolute value is less than epsilon, as desired. Yeah, okay, cool. So there are, as I said, progressively more difficult and interesting examples to come, so check them all out. Take care.